don't be surprised at false religion. I mean, if you didn't experience false, re false religion, how would you have an abhorrence for it? You know, if you didn't see just what false religion could be like, um, you know, these um, authoritarian structures that look more worldly than the world itself, um, well, you wouldn't have the right equipment to enter the kingdom of heaven, you know, to enter um, life eternal with um, the children, the, the host of heaven. You need to learn um, an abhorrence, if you like, or uh, a, 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 a tremendous caution against anything that whispers of that which is not in harmony with the full goodness of God. You need to experience such and be alive and to be able to recognize it. Um, not some sort of innocent blank page novice going into heaven. You know, it's pure because they've experienced none of the realities of evil. I say realities, I mean the realities that evil could be, but for God's grace and presence and forgive, res rescue and, and so forth. Yeah. But please don't be taken in by false religion, because perhaps it's right. Yes, perhaps it's right. That's the whole point, isn't it? Perhaps it's right. Caution, though. There is uncertainty. And the more you look closely, the more you think, ah, that isn't right. You see, we are trained to find fault in this world. We are trained to classify things as good and bad. And, and that is for a very good reason, uh, that we move towards that which is good, that we can distinguish, judge in that sense, not judge in condemning the bad, but judge in the sense of knowing what brings life and goodness and happiness and what does not. And we need to experience what does that so that we recognize it and have an abhorrence for anything that is destructive of true goodness. Well, there are many things that bring harm and sorrow and pain and suffering, and we need to have a comprehensive ability to recognize, judge in that sense, such, and keep firmly from uh, the effects of such, having anything to do with such, in the sense of letting ourselves be taken in that in some sense it will bring good instead of the harm that it brings. So we need to have our eyes opened by experience, by apprenticeship here, we're learning of God in his classroom. You know, we come across religions that are pretty false. We come across saints that are not genuine, tele-evangelists, if you like. I mean, <laughs> we come across all sorts of varieties of evil so that we recognize evil where it is. I don't think evil has some full reign. Uh, I think in some sense it's a presentment of evil, purely because that's how God is teaching us, um, teaching us to know what is good and what is not, to know it and actually be what is good, to adjust our values in harmony with his goodness, not because of some authoritarian motive on his part, but, well, ex except in as far as he authoritatively wants to bless. I mean, goodness, some authority is not too bad, is it? I mean, our trust is in his goodness and his wisdom, 
it's not in any particular facet of the creation that he's presenting to us. You know, we've seen some pretty phony gurus and we've seen some pretty good ones that turn out to be not quite so good on close inspection. And you could say this is a critical eye, but we're meant to have a critical eye in that sense. We're not meant to then be unkind or um, badly intent towards, that would be awful. But we are meant to know and understand what the reality is and how then to do what is best accordingly. And we find out what's best. We learn by trial and error. We learn by experience. We learn by being exposed to enough of the danger to learn, but not so much as to be overwhelmed by it and destroyed. We're exposed, in fact, on the contrary, to that which will make us stronger, more able to enter into the full loveliness that God wants for us and all enlightened beings want for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. <laughs>